The brand new 2025 Toyota Crown Signia is here, and it marks some very important milestones for Toyota. Number one, it's Toyota's first premium SUV since the old Land Cruiser was given the boot back in 2021. Number two, it's replacing the Toyota Venza that's being phased out at the end of 2024. And number three, this will be the first SUV with a crown badge on the back, the company's longest running nameplate. Toyota says the two Crown Signia trims should arrive in showrooms somewhere towards the end of summer, but you don't have to wait because right now, I'm gonna tell you everything you need to know about this incredibly important crossover. Let's get into it. Okay, first things first, we actually drove the Crown sedan at a press launch back in 2022, and honestly, we loved it. But there was one thing we just couldn't get out of our heads. Is there actually even a market for a luxury sedan anymore? Because as nice as the Crown sedan is, it's luxury SUVs that people really want. And it seems like Toyota completely read our minds, because with this, they've taken the Crown and given it the full SUV treatment. Similar to a Mitsubishi Eclipse Cross or Ford Mustang Mach-E, this new Crown Signia is taking a seriously historical model and betting big time on the SUV market, a market full of some pretty stiff competition. The Signia, with its starting price of just over $40,000, is positioned in an interesting spot in the market. It's slightly more expensive than several SUVs in its class. Possible targets here are potential buyers of some less luxurious SUVs like the Hyundai Santa Fe Hybrid, Honda Passport, and possibly others like the Jeep Cherokee, Dodge Hornet, or Nissan Murano. And then there are competitors like the Infiniti QX50 and QX60, Toyota's own Lexus brand with the slightly more upscale and higher priced Lexus RX, and you could make the argument Signia is positioned to go toe to toe with some of the firepower coming from Germany. But we think that Toyota might have its sights on a different arena, the highly successful and more premium than ever Subaru Outback and Forester. They're similarly sized with four-cylinder engines, all-wheel drive, use CVTs, and can be priced within a few thousand dollars of each other. The Subarus may be more wallet-friendly in base trim. However, we think that the Crown Signia might symbolize Toyota's efforts to get Subaru owners to spend slightly more dough for a much more premium experience. So let's get into the Signia. Right off the bat, let's talk design. The front end grabs the most attention here dominated by its sleek monochromatic grille, complete with headlights that are hidden in such a way that they look purposefully subtle. And you might say, huh, I've seen this before. And you'd be right. Jeep did it with the fifth generation Cherokee, Nissan did it with the Juke, and BMW is doing it now with cars like the XM and the new X7. Truth is though, I think the way the designers pull it off here with the crown is probably the best implementation of it yet. Out at the back, the look is subtle and refined, and the wide fenders complement its so-called hammerhead front end. The taillights wrap around the sides, and I think they look great. The rest of the body is handsome and progressive, and overall emphasizes the car's solid proportions. You will notice, though, that because of its sweeping roofline, the greenhouse is slimmed down when compared to more rough-and-tumble SUVs. Toyota says that even with the relatively high belt line, visibility won't be compromised, but we'll have to see when the time comes for us to finally drive this thing. Overall, this new design isn't so wild that someone wouldn't recognize it as a luxury Toyota. And that's the key. In fact, to me, its profile is on par with some of Mazda's SUV design, and that's pretty much always a good thing. And compared to its rivals, Crown Signia has a much more dignified look than the boxy Forester, Santa Fe, and Passport, though design is always subjective. Moving on, let's get to where the magic happens. The Signia boasts a hybrid powertrain system that pairs a 2.5 liter four cylinder engine with electric motors to deliver a combined output of 243 horsepower. Toyota says this powertrain not only provides brisk acceleration, but also maintains fuel efficiency with an estimated 38 miles per gallon combined. But where does its powertrain stack up? Well, it makes more power than both the Forester's buzzy little Boxster and the Santa Fe Hybrid's 1.6 liter. It doesn't quite make as much power as the optional turbocharged flat four in the Outback and can't match the 280 horsepower V6 in the Honda Passport. But as you might have guessed, it gets far better MPGs than the Honda. Plus, in our opinion, 240 horsepower is adequate for the average crossover SUV driver. 
Crown Signia could be right in the sweet spot for performance and efficiency, especially since cars like the Forester will not have a hybrid powertrain until the next model year. If Subaru buyers want a hybrid Forester this year, then they might have no choice but to go Crown Signia. Well played, Toyota. Notably though, Toyota's newest and most powerful iForce Max hybrid powertrain has not yet been announced for the Signia, but I'd be willing to bet both it and a plug-in Prime version are just around the corner. An iForce Max option for this crossover SUV could mean over 300 horsepower, just like we've seen with the Tacoma. With this level of performance and the quality interior that we'll get to soon, even Lexus buyers might be turning their heads this summer. A continuously variable transmission, or CVT, is the only option here. But if you've driven this combo before, you'll know that hybrid electric torque fill and smooth CVTs usually pair for a really nice daily driving experience. If they are a little uncharismatic. Like all Toyota hybrids, this drivetrain includes features like regenerative braking, which uses the brake's kinetic energy to charge the battery, as well as three main selectable driving modes, normal, sport, and eco, and notably, even a fully electric mode for short distance, low speed trips. That's uncommon for non-plug-in hybrids. If you wanna learn more about different types of hybrid systems and how they work, well, click the link right up here. Let's move on. Stepping inside the 2025 Toyota Crown Signia, it's not hard to see where the design team spent a huge portion of the budget. It's frankly beautiful. The front seats are both heated and ventilated with the driver's seat including memory functions. And every seat is upholstered in premium leather with detailed stitching. Plus, check out those bolsters. They might look a little out of place on a crossover hybrid, but they suit the specific interior well and will probably keep you comfy. The centerpiece is a 12.3 inch infotainment touchscreen that sits next to the driver's completely digital gauge cluster. But there's one thing that feels a little out of place with this interior, and it's the steering wheel. With such a luxury oriented look everywhere else, the big boxy center of the wheel and big chunky buttons and lack of any color matching on the leather takes what would be an advanced looking cockpit and just dates it just a little bit. But while it may be out of place in this car, it's not necessarily out of place in this car's class. And overall, this cabin's layout is very thoughtfully designed. Controls are ergonomically placed. The ambient lighting can be adjusted to suit your mood or the time of day. And the buttons, get this, are actually buttons. Toyota has left them in. No capacitive touch or unnecessary touchscreens to control things like climate control or audio volume. Stuff like that is confusing. And thankfully, Toyota agrees. Engineers also focused on sound. And by that, I mean a lack of it. Acoustic glass is used on both the driver and passenger side windows to limit wind noise. And they claim that their designers undertook extensive analysis of noise transmission paths and filled spaces around door frames, window openings, and wiring harnesses with sound deadening foam to further enhance cabin quietness. Even the inner rocker and bulkhead are connected with adhesives, all to help minimize noise, which is <coughs> very Lexus of them. After looking at both the Crown Signia and the new Forester's interiors, they have nearly the same benchmarks. Lots of space, fold down seats for cargo room, updated sound deadening, and a mix of nice materials. The average car buyer wouldn't have an easy choice when it comes down to value. Moving on, Toyota Safety Sense 3.0 is standard, including features like adaptive cruise control, lane departure alert, and a pre-collision system with pedestrian detection. You get lane tracing assist, road sign assist, and automatic high beams, while Drive Connect, Service Connect, Safety Connect, Wi-Fi Connect, and Remote Connect are all available as a subscription. But if the standard safety stuff isn't enough for you, there's also an available advanced technology package on limited trim that includes all of this. You'll also be happy to hear that heated and ventilated seats come as standard across both trims, as does a heated steering wheel. But fancier stuff like the panoramic sunroof and JBL premium audio require you opt for the limited grade. Riding on the same platform as the Crown Sedan, the chassis is engineered for a smooth and quiet ride over a variety of surfaces with McPherson-style dynamic struts at the front and a multi-link setup at the rear. The Signia's electronic power steering can adjust the level of weight based on your speed. There'll be lower effort at lower speeds for easier parking in tight turns, and higher effort at higher speeds for extra stability and control. Crown's all-wheel drive system is another thing to pay attention to here. Depending on the terrain, the system distributes power between the front and rear wheels to optimize grip and stability automatically. 
What makes this system unique, though, is that the rear wheels are exclusively powered by electric motors and can get up to 80% of the driving torque. This helps you avoid doing a front wheel burnout on a wet condition start and limits understeer in the corners. Despite the Crown Signia's low slung lines, it offers admittedly good room in the interior. The rear seats provide generous legroom and headroom, even for your tall friends, making long trips more comfortable for all occupants. And the 60-40 split bench seats are a nice touch. With the seats folded, you get a 6.5 foot long cargo area, perfect for carrying sports equipment, from bikes to surfboards. Additionally, the Crown Signia comes with a motion sensor rear liftgate that opens high and wide making loading and unloading easier with bulky items. As for other storage, it's got all the normal everyday spaces like cup holders, door pockets, and a variety of smaller compartments for whatever you carry around. The center console is fairly large and comes equipped with a wireless charging pad and multiple wired charging ports. There's also a couple ports in the back row too. Now, it is capable of towing up to 2,700 pounds, which will cover a small boat, trailer, or even a lightweight pop-up camper. That being said, if you need to tow anything with some more gravity to it, you'll want to take a look at some of Toyota or Lexus's other options and avoid tearing the Crown Signia in half. Let's talk pricing. The base model XLE starts at $43,590, while the limited grade goes for $47,990. And as far as pricing in its competitive field goes, the Crown Signia is in the upper half, with the Santa Fe and Forester being cheaper and the Passport being on par with the Toyota. But as for those Subarus, you'll notice they're priced a whopping 10 grand less than a base Crown Signia. However, when in top trim, the touring version of the Forester starts at $41,390, while a loaded Outback comes in at $42,795, both coming within a few thousand of the Crown Signia's base model, and just a little further from the limited trim. But this comparison is more than numbers. The Signia and the Subarus are aiming for the same things, but doing it at slightly different levels and prices. The Crown Signia gives you a hybrid powertrain, more standard power, and better mileage, but the Forester and Outback have slightly more cargo room and standard roof racks. Signia has more standard safety features and a more upscale interior, but the Subarus cost a lot less. It's a comparison we didn't think we'd be making when the Crown Signia was announced, but we think it's relevant nonetheless. The deciding factor between all these cars is, well, you. Do you want to spend a little more cash for more amenities, more modern powertrain, and sleeker looks? Or do you want to save a little money and get one of its competitors that have proven themselves year after year? Regardless, we're excited to see how the Signia debuts on the streets, and how its competitors, including some SUVs that cost quite a bit more, stack up in the real world. I actually predict the Signia will be a relatively strong seller, seeing as at this price point, it truly punches way above its weight. But I guess like always, you the people will vote with your wallets and time will tell. That wraps up our deep dive into the 2025 Toyota Crown Signia. And I want to know, what do you guys think about it? Drop your thoughts down in the comments. And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe. Go check out some of our other content right over here. Thanks for watching. I'll see you all next week.